Welcome to Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit. In this video, I'm going to show you how to service the carburetor on an SV150 petrol lawnmower. These engines are fitted quite often on mountain field lawnmowers, and occasionally they're called SV150 engines, and occasionally they're called RV150 engines. Slight differences, but the servicing of the carburetor is exactly the same. Let's get started right now. If this is your first time on Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit YouTube channel, be sure to subscribe and tick the bell notification icon. That way I can keep you up to date on everything that's going on on this channel. You won't miss a thing, and of course it's completely free. Behind me I've got two new lawnmowers to work on. My dad's just bought for me at a local car boot sale. He's paid £35 for two petrol lawnmowers here. I know nothing about them. One's got a self-drive, one hasn't. One is plastic unfortunately and the other one isn't but the deck's scruffy. We haven't tried to start these up at all. So I've dropped some petrol in them. Let's see if we can fire these two up. And let's see if we can turn these two lawnmowers around for profit. Right, so first of all, let's try this Champion mower. Let's see, I've just dropped some petrol in these. I've not actually tried them yet. Um, I'm just gonna tip this. Just make sure it looks like the blade is on all right. Yeah, it's sat on and everything looks like it should be in the right place so there's no primer on these type of lawnmower so all I'm going to do with this I'm just going to um, put it onto choke I'll just try and start this lawnmower up the spring feels like it's working all right I'm actually listening for a micro switch clicking in here as well I can just hear that clicking so let's try it So that at least starts, but that's a classic sign of wanting the carburetor servicing, but it does run. And in fact, I think it started first pull, didn't it? Let's try this other one. This has got a primer bulb on the front. This is just a little plastic sovereign mower. I don't, I don't do this now without actually just filming it live, because you never quite know what's going to happen, really. Just have a look under here. That one is all sat on the blade adapter nice as well. Let's prime this a few times. They're really dirty this, I just want a really good clean up. This looks like it's got new cables on here as well. It also looks fairly new this one, so let's try it. So that seems to be running uh, reasonably well as well, but it's really dirty. Let's have a close-up look at these lawnmowers. So this is a Sovereign lawnmower, as I've mentioned plenty of times before, and even on the uh, the new articles I've just written at the website, I don't like plastic deck lawnmowers, especially new ones, are very thin. So I really don't think they're, they're built to, to last very long, but this one has got height adjusters on, and they are like metal as well, they're not all flimsy plastic. So I do quite like that. I don't like how the handle's attached. I just generally don't like these lawnmowers. And a lot of people probably comment saying they hate this engine. This is a, it's either an RV150 engine or an SV150 engine. I think they're bad differently whether they've got a self-driving or not. So I'd imagine that's an RV150. And I think this will be an SV150. Two engines that people really uh, comment a lot on, on on my YouTube videos. And actually, I get... A little bit of negative comments when I do these lawnmowers but actually these are the videos that most people watch because quite honestly these are the <laughs> the lawnmowers that most people have problems with so we've got this sovereign here and it's got a self-drive on it and it's got it looks like it's got a service ticket that's just been pulled off there can you see there that looks fairly new it looks you know the string don't look dirty or old or anything and these cables all look like new and I looked on this ticket here just before I started up and I just couldn't see a date on there I'll have another look in a minute when I'm not filming, so I'm only looking through the back of my camera at the minute. I can't actually see a date on there, but I think that's only a year or two old. And this one, 
which wants servicing. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have a self-drive. I wish it did, but it has got a grass box with it. Let's see if this has got a year. This is 2007. What I might do with this one, after I've serviced the carburetor, I might take everything off this, all the adjusters and take the engine off, take this grass box deflector off and all the wheels off and everything, and just tidy this deck up a little bit, because these are quite nice lawnmowers, these Champion ones. 46 centimetre cut as well. So it's raining again at the minute, but I've got for £35, I've got two more petrol lawnmowers to add to the collection. To add to this uh, collection in here, I've just got my own mass port there, I've got this Honda Izzy as well, which wants a carb servicing. And I've got this Qualcast one, which is serviced up. I'm just trying to, I've got a saved search on eBay for one of these uh, side discharge ports. I've seen a few of them for sale, but about £18. And they only paid 15 for this lawnmower, so I don't want to pay that. I'm not in any rush to sell it, but I've got um, a couple there. And I've got a couple here as well, so I'm gathering a small collection. I think what I'll probably do now, now as it's the uh, middle of November, you start saving these up for next spring. So that's where I am with things. I think the next thing I'm going to do is just give these a clean off. And I actually do think this little sovereign mower will actually just clean up like, like new. But it's amazing how much dirt people can get on things. Isn't it? Look at this in here. You know, I could spend a long time cleaning that up. I've actually just considered buying a, a little steam cleaner for doing this. After I did that last video on the MTD with the Tecumseh engine, it took me quite a while to clean it off. So I've actually, if anyone has any success with steam cleaning engines like this, these little lawnmower engines, just leave me a comment in the comments section of this video. So I've got a little bit of a list of jobs going on with this Honda one as well, I want to get that one sorted. And I'm, uh, as I said, I'm quite tempted to take quite a lot of parts off these lawnmowers and tidy these decks up so I've got a little bit more time over the winter months. You'd be doing me a huge favour just at the minute if you could go on my new website which is repairlawnmowersforprofit.com. I've actually written 18 articles, I think it is now. I'm just going to read out uh, just one or two of these that I've actually written. And this can really help you if you've just started repairing lawnmowers for profit. These articles that I'm writing over the winter months include a petrol lawnmower hunting and surging. These are all helpful articles for anyone that's starting repairing lawnmowers for profit. What to do if your lawnmower pull cord stuck, how to replace the ignition coil, lawnmower kickback help and repairs. How to clean and service a petrol lawnmower carburetor. All these are in-depth articles that I've written. I'm really trying to help people out who visit this website. How to replace the governor springs. What to do if the lawnmower runs too fast. What to do if the lawnmower won't start. What to do if the lawnmower vibrates too much. How to check and replace a kill switch. Um, I've written all sorts of things. I've really, uh, I've dedicated some time to doing this over the winter months for everybody that's um, been good enough to subscribe to the channel here. 21 tips for servicing a petrol lawnmower. I've also written a few buyer's guides for people looking to purchase lawnmowers, including a buyer's guide to choosing a second-hand lawnmower, eight best walk-behind petrol lawnmowers that could last a lifetime, how to cut wet grass and the best lawnmowers to do it with. There's a lot of tips and tricks, like a day like today. If you've only got today to cut some grass and it's wet, sometimes you just have to get it done, don't you? So I wrote that article on that basis. And I've also written 19 reasons not to buy a cheap lawnmower, such as the sovereign one I've just shown you behind. And recently, the most recent article I've written is uh, the three, three best lawnmowers for large gardens, which is a buyer's guide. So there's loads of information on there, and I'm building this site up over the next uh, sort of six months over winter anyway. It's going to be a useful resource for everybody who's looking to repair lawnmowers for profit. So I'm going to clean these two lawnmowers off behind me, and I'm going to have a look in the garage, and we'll decide which repair to do next. So as I say, you'd be doing me a massive favour if you could just check out Repair Lawnmowers for Profit. The link to the website is in the description of this video as well. You can just click from there and it'll take you directly to the website. Okay, so what I've decided to do in this video is I'm going to service the carburetor on an SV150 petrol lawnmower engine. If you look actually under here, there's actually a little sticker on the back of it that says SV150. It's the same on this Champion lawnmower, exactly the same engine as the one on the Sovereign, both the same. The Sovereign one's running okay, but this one, you'll have noticed, was revving up and down quite a lot and it just couldn't hold its revs. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this part piece by piece and we're going to have a look at servicing this carburetor. So let's just start by removing this air filter box. Just undo this little catch at this far side here. That just comes off. Just remove this air filter out of the way. That gives us access to three parts here. We're going to remove this, and this whole air filter box has to come off. And these two parts that run right through here, this is what I actually hold the carburetor on. There's no fuel tap on this, so I suggest that you clamp this fuel line here to stop any further fuel coming out. So you're also going to want an old tub when this carburetor comes off, something to put this in to catch any old fuel. I'll just clamp these fuel lines. These mole grips, probably not the best way of doing it, I always say that, but I always end up doing it anyway. Don't do it too tightly, just clamp it there and that gives you a start. Now I'm going to get my socket set and I'm going to undo these parts. 
So just one more thing to do before we start working on the lawnmower, no matter what procedure we're doing, just remove this spark plug lead, and just push this out of the way. Always recommend doing that, it doesn't matter what you're doing, then if you get into the habit of doing it, there's no way you're ever going to forget about it, so I'm just going to back these off a little bit, just to make sure I can get these off. I'll probably take this recoil cover off as well, it's only three parts on the top. We'll take this off. This little one at the front here, don't really do too much, it's just holding the air filter box in position on the front of this bracket here, so we'll take that one off. Keep everything in the same place, try and remember where things go. And I always use a, a magnetic tray to put all my parts in as well, so I don't lose anything. So that's loose, I'll try and get that one out of there. Okay, so I've left everything still in position. This one's actually out and this one's just slightly holding everything together. What I am going to do before I do anything else, just so I can film this a bit better and you can see, I'm just going to quickly remove this starter recoil, which really doesn't take much doing, it's exactly the same size, just a 10mm socket, I'll just take this off here, take these three parts off. With that out of the way, it just gives you access to the top, and what I can do then for anybody who's taken the carburetor off, is I can film all these springs and linkages, and I can show you exactly where everything goes, because it can be really awful if you take one of these apart. And you can't find the diagram anywhere on the internet. So I'll just whip this cover off here. Just take that off. We'll move that out of the way. I'm also going to remove this as well. So I've got access to absolutely everything. From there now I can see right over the top of here, I can see all these linkages and springs. And before I start taking anything off, I'm going to film absolutely everything on the top of here to help anybody out who's taken theirs apart. Or if anybody's wondering if they're missing a, li a linkage or a spring. Well, as we know, this lawnmower starts and runs. So this spring configuration, which is uh, it's a bit um, dated nowadays, this is. It's... Um, and if you look at the new 450 or 500 E-series Briggs and Stratton engine, it's got one governor spring that goes to a uh, carburetor, which is fantastic. But for anybody who's taken it apart, who's worried about missing a spring, just take a look at all these little parts in here. Where the linkages go, where the springs go. I've often had ones where this little spring round here is even broken, so this actual arm here doesn't move. Make sure this governor flap moves freely as well. Everything should spring in a kind of tug of war effect, I like to call it. But that's where everything goes. So before you take your carburetor off, I always suggest taking photographs, which is exactly what I'm going to do now using a mobile phone. You can see the micro switch here as well. Make sure all that's working when we put that back together. So this is where all the linkages and all the springs go on an SV150 lawnmower engine. So it's good fun when you're filming these kind of live because you're really never too sure yourself exactly what's going to happen, even though I've done it a lot of times before. You can all... Uh, go wrong fairly quickly so I'm going to try and keep hold of the carburetor pull the breather off, see there's a little breather pipe on the back of there that's stayed on the back of this air filter box set that to one side and now I've got this fuel line clamped, I can pull this away from the machine and if you look on the top there there's actually just the one linkage there I'm going to take off there's one there and one here I don't actually need to take the back ones off that go to this governor flap assembly at all I'm going to take this one linkage off here which has fallen off I'm just going to film that for my own benefit for when I put that back on, make sure that that goes the correct way. I'll set that in the same place. And I'm going to unhook this one linkage from here. And then I've got this carburetor removed completely from this SV150 petrol lawnmower. I've got the fuel line clamped. I'm actually just going to drop this in this tub here. Like so now I've got a bit better access, what I'm going to do, and this carburetor is still fairly level, is I'm just going to unclamp that, I'm going to reclamp this further along here. I'm going to slide off this fuel line. This is why it's really handy to have this in a tub. Just move that along. I'm just going to unplug this from here. And I've got this carburetor off this lawnmower. And what I like to do, as I've done in many videos, I'll just take a bolt here. That might be a bit big actually. I'm just going to screw that in the end of this fuel line and that'll stop any remaining fuel leaking out of this fuel line. So I've actually used the bolt that I took out the left hand side of the carburetor. So I'll take that off. And then I'm free. And this is why we need a tub because as soon as you take the lawnmower carburetor off, as soon as you tip it up, you probably just see there, there's a lot of fuel ready to pour out of this. Can you see all that coming out? And this is why you want to be doing it into a tub. Just keeps everything clean and tidy. I've got that separate. 
I've got this that's no longer leaking anything out at all. That's all blocked off. So I can now service this carburetor. For anyone wondering why I'm doing this, I showed at the beginning of this video this lawnmower ran, but it revved up and down. It didn't maintain revs. And if you get that, it's a classic example of a carburetor that needs servicing. I'll just have a few little bits of dirt in it. We're just going to give that a service up now and we'll try it back on this machine and just see if it idles and runs as it should. Okay, so the next thing I want to do with this is just remove the bowl from this carburetor. Hopefully you can see really well. It's quite clean on the outside as this. Normally I would just blast this off with a compressor, clean it all off, but it's not actually too bad. So all I'm going to do now is remove this bowl at the bottom. That's it. You'll see the remainder of the fuel just wants to come out of here. Just take that out. Just really careful. Be really careful with these screws at the bottom of here. It's really easy to cross thread those when you put them back in, particularly on the Tecumseh ones, as I've done recently. I was very close to cross threading that if I'm honest. There's a gasket as well. And all these lawnmowers really are exactly the same. Anything with a bowl style carburetor, I like to refer them to as a bowl style carburetor because of this bowl. But just take out the retaining pin here, as you can see here. I'll take that out. And then this float actually has a needle on here. You see the little needle on the back there? This is really easy to lose, watch. You tip this over normally just falls off that's actually stayed on that, that's good but that just slides on this one it just slides in that little gap normally that can fall off on a, a Honda one or to come to one that little needle could fall off so if you've lost that that could be a problem take the float off that's the float there and there we have access to everything inside this carburetor what we want to do next is remove this main jet from inside here to remove this main jet you'll need a flat headed screwdriver we just need to put that down here there's actually a little cut out here where I can get the screwdriver in. We can actually undo that. This removes this main jet. If you can't get it out that way, after you've unscrewed it, take an Allen key and poke it down from the top and it will actually push it down further for you. Just be really careful with all these parts. You can see there, these main jets have dropped out. We're going that way. This one goes to the top. That one goes up to the top. You can see they've all got tiny little holes in of these. This is what gets clogged and stops your lawnmower from idling properly and running properly. And this should have a little hole in as well. Make sure you can see daylight through this. So I've got this whole thing apart now. What I want to do next is just take some carb spray. You can use any I have this STP carb spray. And I'm just going to give it a good blast through. Everywhere I can see, every little hole and everywhere. And just get it in here. And I'm also going to clean off all these parts. And when I've done with that, I'm just going to blow it all off with the air compressor. If you don't have an air compressor, just get yourself a can of compressed air. So I'm just going to spray in everywhere I can see all the little tiny holes. And just make a really thorough job of cleaning everything out. It's really important that the whole thing is really clean and tidy. It's also really important to make sure this bowl's completely clean as well. Make sure there's no little bits in here. As you can see here, I've not done this one yet. It's just little bits like that. That may just be rust, but there's tiny little bits that come off on your finger. And it only takes those tiny little bits of dirt to get through. If you can just see them, they're absolutely minute holes that are on this. You can just see there just how small some of these holes are on this main jet. If any of these are blocked at all, it won't run correctly. And you will have these uh, revving up and down and stalling issues. Everything does need to be really clean and tidy when you're doing this servicing. As many of my subscribers know, I actually have an air compressor just sat under this bench here, so what I like to do is just take the airline, just blow everything out, just get in every little bit and blow it right through, dry everything off. You can see here just how much pressure you can get through there. Just get everything really nice and clean. So, with anyone wearing headphones, that might not be so pleasant. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go around this whole thing, clean the outside, every little bit on the inside. I'm going to clean off this main jet here, make sure it's all had a real good blow through with this air compressor. Make sure it's completely dry, then I'll show you how to reassemble the carburetor on an SV150 lawnmower. So I've taken the time to dry everything off with the air compressor, blow everything through. I've also taken all the old fuel out of this little box here and made sure everything's nice and dry and tidy. So I've now got a nice clean carburetor that I need to reassemble. So what we need to do to reassemble is we need to set this jet here and just pop this back in. It goes with the, uh, the smallest point, the thinnest point to the top. We'll just drop that in there, that just sits in. Then what we need to do is take the other part of this jet here. This one here, which is the one we took out with the flat headed screwdriver. Make sure you get this in the right way. You must put this in with the side with actually where the flat headed screwdriver can get to it to take it out again. That actually drops in like that. And we'll just take our screwdriver again, 
really carefully making sure we don't cross thread anything at all we'll just take that back in there and we'll just tighten that back up to the point where it stops snip it up a little bit you can be sure it's in right if you take a look through the top you should actually see this just poking out just through the top of this carburetor as well I actually had a recent subscriber contact me on YouTube and asked me about where the springs exactly went on the top of this carburetor so the one that he had that had actually failed was this tiny little spring here can you see the one that sits under here it actually has this little tab that bends off here that one had actually failed so this actually this throttle arm here this didn't actually return and that was what was causing him a problem with his lawnmower so if you've got an SV150 or an RV150 engine just check this spring's still attached under here it's tiny but just make sure while you've got everything off that this actually returns exactly to where it should because I do know people have had this problem and this one should do the same on the top as well the next thing you need to do is just refit this washer see here this just fits around here make sure this is all seated correctly we'll pop that in there the next thing I want to do is refit this needle this is the worst bit of doing these style carburetors because this one's actually got a spring on so make sure you're somewhere where you can you know try and find it if it jumps off because it does tend to jump about from time to time but what I like to do is just put it on from the bottom there and I try and just pull the spring down as I'm doing it as well it's a little bit of a fiddle about you don't really need to take this off this carburetor it might be better advice just to leave it on but if you've taken it off it actually should have a spring on if it doesn't have a spring on it won't seat properly so just pull that back out of the way and slide that back on you see after a, a couple of seconds a couple of goes there you can see how this just bounces about that's exactly what it's supposed to do without the spring it won't work properly so what we do now we take this carburetor we'll just drop this needle back down here you can see here make sure it goes in we'll get our returning pin and we'll just put this pin back through here and that holds everything together you see how it goes through there just push that through there look like that what you want to do now is just take a look at the floor and make sure this needle looks like it's moving up and down you can see from the back there if it doesn't move up and down freely and it doesn't seat properly what will happen is when you put this back together and put it back on the lawnmower you'll find that this actual ball here just fills with fuel and it just overflows and you'll have a fuel spillage everywhere so make sure the retaining pins sat nice and central here before you put the ball back on make sure the needle's moving up and down and it's all bouncing around nicely on the spring the next thing we're going to do we're going to keep an eye on this washer here and we're going to refit this ball but what I want you to do is make sure that this ball actually goes on in the right position what I mean by the right position is when this is fitted back on the lawnmower this actually has a drain hole on the front here so what you want to do is make sure the drain hole is just situated right to the front so once that's back on there back on the lawnmower you can actually get access to this drain plug should you need it you don't want to tighten it up with this around the back here so it's pointing towards the actual lawnmower engine itself you'll never be able to use it should you need to so make sure you've got this washer fitted correctly between this bowl and this carburetor and make sure that this is facing the right direction so you can get to this drain plug should you need to before I tighten anything up what I like to do with these carburetors is just do this you can just hear that the float is moving up and down as it should and the final thing to do before we put this back on this lawnmower is just take this part and we'll just put this back in here be really careful not to cross thread these it's really easy to get these cross threaded so just put them in hand tight at first make sure everything fits as it should have a good look round at this washer here and when you're happy that everything's in the right place just nip this back up so I'm happy that that's seated okay and I'm just going to tighten this back up and that's the actual servicing of a Mountfield or SV150 petrol lawnmower carburetor not too difficult to do there's only a few little parts the main thing is don't lose that little needle or the spring just keep everything dry and tidy before you put it back together and blow everything through and what we should have when we fit this back on this lawnmower is we should have a lawnmower that actually starts up okay as it did before but it should run at um, faster and slower speeds and it shouldn't hunt, surge and rev up and down and do all those types of things okay so let's have a go at putting this carburetor back on here you can see this linkage at the top that's the one we took off I'm just going to hook that one on first of course this time putting it back on we have the advantage that this carburetor is not actually full of fuel now I'm going to take this little linkage here, this can be a bit of fun if you've not done this before so this is the way around it goes, hopefully you can see that we'll pop that part in there and then this part, this always takes a few goes does this so I thought I'd film it sort of live just for a bit of fun we'll get that part in in a second 
pop that in and then this drops in through the top you can see there this all should go back together and, and the key to it all is to make sure all the linkages are, are correctly in position and that one slipped away and everything should move about perfectly which is what I'm going to show you now just move the camera but you can see all these linkages are moving on the top here I'll move the camera and I'll show you exactly what I mean what I'm actually looking at before I put this fuel line back on and put this air filter housing back on is I've hooked these two linkages back on this one and this one here at the back you see how this governor flap they haven't tightened anything up there's no bolts through here yet you see how this governor flap moves about here you can see how this one moves about as well if you just move that one as well you can see how it all opens and closes properly if I was to move the throttle which I'm doing now on the handle everything's going to move about so I'm sure that the linkages are back in the right place this is just hanging loose here one thing I've just noticed on this is this actual micro switch wire here it's just sort of flapping about here it's really close to stopping this governor flap from opening and closing properly so I'm just going to push this down out of the way a little bit more and then we'll refit this carburetor back on just a quick note while I've got this apart, if you've got an, an SV150 or an RV150 engine that's hunting as well, just keep your eye on this this actual wire here that runs from this micro switch. It's very close to this governor flap assembly here. And if this doesn't open and close properly, it won't set the correct speed. So if you've got the recoil cover off, make sure that this little cable or wire is just tucked out of the way. I'm just going to push that out of the way a little bit more. And that's not a very good design really. I'm not actually sure that that should run around there. But that's where it was when I took it off. And that's where it's going to stay but I'm going to push it out of the way and make sure this governor flap actually opens and closes properly. You can see here I've got these linkages all hooked up as they should be as they were before and this is just sat here loose waiting to be put back together now. Now I don't like to use the term killer tip but I'm going to give you a killer tip now. Don't ever refit all this air filter housing and everything else and then try and fit the fuel line. There's two reasons for this. It's harder to fit the fuel line, it's harder to get this clip back along but the second reason and the most important reason is you may find that when you finally get it all back together and connect this fuel line with difficulty you might find that you have a leak on the carburetor so what I like to do before I put anything back is I actually like to connect the fuel line and just visually inspect the bottom of this carburetor for any leaks. So now I know I'm not going to be tipping this carburetor sort of upside down or back to front or anything ridiculous it's not going to be travelling too far what I'm going to do is reconnect this fuel line while I've got access to it before I put this actual air filter housing back on that way I can get to it straight away and as I've said I can just clip that on and I can just keep an eye for the next few minutes I'm just going to stand there, I won't film all this I'm going to make sure there's no leaks, nothing's pouring out the top of this carburetor from here or underneath if it does it means you've got the needle in the incorrect position inside this carburetor and it can't find a level in the float bowl and it will actually flood the carburetor so I suggest doing this first and waiting uh, two to three minutes and making sure you've got no leaks before you put everything back together on this type of lawnmower. So I've waited the good two or three minutes, there's no leaking on here at all. What I want to do next is just put this air filter cover back on here. This breather hose needs to go on first, this actually connects on here. Make sure this linkage doesn't drop out, that's the worst thing about putting this back together. So I've got the fuel line connected, I'm going to hook this breather on here. Just push that on from the back. I'm going to lift this carburetor into position exactly where it wants to be. Make sure all the linkages are still in place. It's all a little bit fiddly to do. Just push this breather hose back on again. Make sure that's on. Push this up here. That's it. We've got everything in position. And just line everything up. You can see all the holes line up. I've got all the linkages in the right position and nothing's getting stuck. So what I'm going to do now is put these two parts back through and hold everything together. So I've got this breather hose on here, everything's still really slack. I've just put this first bolt through here. Don't forget this goes right through this air filter housing, right through the carburetor and into the engine here. Make sure that you've got this washer still sat on here nice and make sure this linkage is in here. Make sure everything still moves about. So everything's really slack, it's all just a little bit awkward to do. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to refit it, I'm just going to put this next bolt right back through everything exactly the same as on the other side. We'll just take this second one, just get everything lined up. Once you've done this a few times it's really not too difficult to do. Just the first few times you do it you can't believe how kind of awkward it can be but it's not, it's not really too bad to do. So once you've got both these bolts back through here 
once again, I know I keep saying this, but make sure all the linkage is in the right place. Make sure everything moves. Every time you put a part in, just check everything. And don't forget this little one at the front that holds this air filter box on here. It's only small, it can be a little bit more difficult to get in. But if you leave it too long, you take these other ones up, you can find that it doesn't line up perfect. So I like to just get that one started. Just get all three of them in and started, and then just nip these up evenly. That's all you need to do. It's just a little bit more time consuming than a Briggs & Stratton 35 Classic engine. It's very similar this, once you've learned how to do this, you can do this on this type of engine, and you can do it on the Honda ones as well. The Honda ones are actually probably marginally easier than this. So we'll just nip these up so we feel the tight. We'll just tighten this one up a little bit as well. And then I'm gonna show you a few things on the top of this carburetor to look out for, to make sure that everything's gonna run right when we start this up. I'm actually gonna take this outside in a minute, once I've got this recoil cover refitted. And we're gonna start this up. And we'll see how it runs just compared to before. So I'm happy that they're tight. Okay, so everything's back in place. I've got these bolts back through. See this linkage here? If you actually move this here, you'll actually see this linkage moving up and down. Look, can you see? That operates there and opens everything up. Everything's moving as it should. This one's springing back and opening this governor flap assembly. Actually got this pushed down a little bit further out of here. This little screw here, that can adjust your idle speed. That's where it sits against when it opens up. You can actually alter that if you want. But the one thing I want to say about this is, if you're having running troubles with surging or revving up and down or stalling stretching any of these springs or altering any of these screws will not help at all with this issue the only proper way to do this the only correct way that will work anyway is to do exactly what i've just done and service this carburetor so i've got all this back together i'm going to put this air filter box back on and put this part back on here as well that just goes on sits on top of them we'll put this recoil cover back on we'll take this outside and we'll just see how it runs so I'm just going to sit this part back on here, that just sits on like that, let's just get these two things lined up, like that, that just sits on, the recoil sits on like that, I'll take these parts and put these three on, I'll put this air filter box back on in a minute as well, I'll just put these back on, as I say we'll take it outside and we'll try this. I know this engine really does get a bit of a slating on my YouTube channel but the one good thing I have to say about it is to service a carburetor on an RV150 or an SV150 petrol lawnmower, all you need is a 10mm socket and you can do everything. That's the only tool I've used so far, even to take this recoil off. So let's take it out the side and let's try this. Let's just put this air filter box back on as well. This all wants a good clean off. It doesn't look too bad. We'll pop that on. We'll uh, sit this back on here as well. Put that back on there. There's a little clip, put that through, and this should be uh, the carburetor serviced on this lawnmower. Right, so let's go, let's get my tripod, let's put it on this tripod. I've got this out here now, look. Reconnected this spark plug. I like to do these things live. My subscribers really like this when I do this uh, sort of first hand. You get to see exactly what's going on. So, you've uh, seen everything I've done. Let's just see if this lawnmower will start as it did before, and let's see if it'll run without surging. So, so I've reconnected this, there's no primer on this. Let's just put this up to choke.
So there we go, that's a lot better than it was when we tried it sort of half an hour ago before we serviced this carburetor. Initially it was actually revving up and down a little bit, there's quite a bit of smoke coming out, it's just actually burning off some oil that's in the exhaust there as I've had it tipped up and down. And also I've noticed underneath as well that the blade isn't sat perfectly on the blade adapter, so it's not 100% perfect, but servicing this carburetor has certainly solved 90% of the running problems. I'm sure with the new spark plug and the blade correctly fitted on here when it's burnt all this oil off, I'm happy that this lawnmower is going to run again. Now the reason I wanted to do that is because actually the next Next thing I want to do is I actually want to remove this engine so I can actually paint this deck up as well. I've actually just put another spark plug in this as well just to see if it helps a little bit. Well, bit by bit we're getting there. The spark plugs helped and the servicing of this carburetor has really helped as well. So I really do hope this video helps anybody out. These SV150 or RV150 engines are fitted on a lot of mount field petrol lawnmowers. So if you're not sure what engine it is, it's possibly one of those if it looks like this. Take a look at the side actually under the recoil cover, you'll see a sticker that says SV150 or RV150. If this video has helped you out, you could do me a massive favour by going to my website, which is repairlawnmowersforprofit.com. I'm actually currently writing an article on SV and RV150 engines and there will be a link to that in the description of this video in the future so if i've helped you out click like click subscribe do me a massive favor and head over to the website at repairlawnmowersforprofit.com there's actually a recommended products page on there you'll find everything you need for servicing your petrol lawnmowers thanks very much for watching thanks to everybody that's subscribed so far nearly 7,000 subscribers which is fantastic i will see you again next time happy mowing with these sv and rv 150 petrol lawnmower engines